If you're into superhero movies, then you've probably admired at least one of the vehicles that feature in them. After all, they're nothing like what we have driving around our city streets. Or are they? As it turns out, some of them actually exist. From a custom-made hell cycle to a super fan's creation, here are 15 superhero vehicles that actually exist. Number 15. Batmobile. If you've watched the Dark Knight trilogy, then you were probably in awe of the Batman Tumblr Batmobile. Boy, that was an exciting piece of kit. But you probably never thought in a million years that you could actually own something identical to it. If you have a million bucks to spare and happen to be in Dubai, you actually could. A replica Batmobile, as featured in the trilogy, was spotted by fans outside a car dealership in Dubai. You might think it was just there as a display piece, but it was actually for sale. Unfortunately, in case you're wondering, it can't fly. But it does have some impressive features. Its Chevrolet Corvette V8 5.7 liter petrol engine is capable of producing over 500 horsepower. It can also be registered to drive legally on UAE roads, or so the owner says. It also has one incredible ace to play. When you drive it at high speeds, which we don't recommend because, you know, safety, the front of it rises up to create a spider effect. You would have seen this in Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. The Hell Cycle. Ghost Rider was a 2007 superhero film starring Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze, who gives up his soul to become the Ghost Rider. And when you got such a cool title, you need to keep up appearances. Basically, you don't see Johnny making his way around the city on public transport. Instead, you see him roaring around on a hell cycle, a motorcycle that always seems to be on fire. I'm no safety expert, but that doesn't seem, uh, safe. Even though it looks like a lot of special effects have been used for this mode of transport, the bike actually exists. It's just not really all that practical. It is a custom-built chopper with a fiberglass molded shell that looks like chrome. It comes from Australia, measures 11 feet long, and weighs a whopping 500 pounds. It looks like a pretty sweet ride, but it's not really made for riding. It's not street legal, and if you run the engine for too long, the fiberglass starts to melt. It also lacks a turning radius and has dismal front suspension. But how cool would it be to have this bike on display in your garage? Number 13. The Joker's Car when you first laid eyes on the Joker's car in Suicide Squad, you probably tried to figure out what it was. It looked like a Lamborghini, but also a Ferrari. Car enthusiasts would have been scratching their heads. The Joker's car was actually a Vidor. What? Yep, a Vidor. But it's not actually a car manufacturer. Vidor comes from Vidor Exotics, which is a Pinellas Park, Florida company founded by Matt McEntegaard. Even though I wanted the coolest stuff, I didn't have money, so I decided I had to build it all myself. This genius sculpted the supercar out of fiberglass. He also fitted it with some exciting hardware and accessories and set it all up in an Infiniti G35 platform. So how did this vehicle styling all come about? Well, Matt received a phone call that specified they needed a car for the Joker, like a supercar, but without the supercar money. And that's how the Vidor was born. The best part? You can buy a kit for your own G35 for $60,000, which is far more affordable than your average supercar. Of course, one look under the hood and people know right away that you don't have a supercar. Number 12. 
Captain America Motorcycle. Easy Rider is a classic film that remains popular even today, even though it was filmed decades ago. You might not remember every detail about the film, but you'd probably remember the Captain America motorcycle. Even to this day, people are creating replicas of the bike so that you can own your very own little slice of movie history. While there are many non-replica replicas out there, there are also some that are known as authorized replicas. These have some sort of connection to the film and tend to be a little bit more sought after. One in particular was up for sale on eBay a few years back that had been owned by Lawrence Fishburne from the film Apocalypse Now. Lawrence also appeared in Biker Boys, and so did his bike, even though he only rode sports bikes. When the bike went up for sale, it was listed in Memphis for $27,500, which seemed like quite a steal for a piece of movie history. It's an officially licensed tribute bike that was produced for the movie's 30th anniversary by Peter Fonda and the California Motorcycle Company. Number 11. Replica Ghostbusters Car you can pick up many vehicles at your average car yard that are lookalikes for those that have appeared in movies. These days, there aren't too many rare ones. But if there's one car you just can't find, it's the Ectomobile, or Ecto-1, from Ghostbusters. It's just that unique. But one guy was determined to have that car. So he made it. For eight years, Lauren Baldwin searched high and low, looking for the perfect vehicle to form the body. He eventually found it, a 1959 Miller Meteor chassis, both a hearse and an ambulance. He then spent two years looking for parts and another six months creating his very own Ecto-1. But he didn't just make it kind of similar to the movie vehicle. He spent an entire day looking at the original car in Los Angeles, writing down as many measurements as he could. He then spent around $20,000 on the conversion, but it would have been more like a hundred grand if he didn't have help and support from local businesses. The resultant car is incredible. It even has a storage tank for captured ghosts and working blue lights. Number 10. The Optimus Prime Truck the Transformers franchise has, to put it mildly, been a success. At the box office worldwide, it has earned more than $4 billion, so needless to say, there are quite a few fans. But some fans stand out more than others. One man, a dedicated father with no mechanical training whatsoever, created the first Optimus Prime truck to be built by a fan. In the 80s, he was the leader of the Autobots. He still is leader of the Autobots. In 2016, Monroe County, Pennsylvania man Joe Fiducia worked around the clock to build a full-sized replica weighing 21,000 pounds. And you know why Joe did it? So he could inspire his 10-year-old son to believe that anything is possible. Joe reached out to Hasbro to get permission to build it and then contacted Western Star, who built the truck for him. He spent that summer of 2016 putting the final touches on it before hitting the highway for the first time. Because Joe didn't have any blueprints, they figured out how to create a picture-perfect replica from watching videos and movies. Even though the truck hasn't received any special recognition, they have a Facebook page for it and you can get a ride to school in it for 125 bucks. Number 9. Spider-Man Car if you're a big fan of superheroes, you've probably bought a few bits of merchandise here and there. But what if you wanted to shout about your passion from the rooftops? Or, well, the roads? Well, now you can. A business called Rap Style in Singapore now offers superhero-inspired vehicle wraps, so nearly anyone can have a superhero-like car. So far, they've made Superman wraps for Mercedes-Benz SLG AMG, Batman wraps for an Audi R8, Captain America and Iron Man Lamborghini Aventador wraps, and a Hulk wrap for a Nissan GTR. The shop's very own McLaren 650S gets around in a Spider-Man wrap, and it's very impressive. It's mostly red with blue accents and has a massive spider sprawled across the bonnet. Rap Style said on Facebook that they plan 
plan to have 14 different superhero options in total. Vinyl wraps for cars in general have been taking off in popularity. They are often far more affordable than a full paint job and aren't 100% permanent. If you decide at a later date to change your vehicle's style, it's easy enough to do. Be right back, I'm just booking my car for a Hulk wrap. Number 8. Fat Pod the Bat Pod made an appearance in The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. It was a form of escape pod for Batman and looked incredible on the road. And why wouldn't it? The Bat Pod in the movies has dual front-mounted cannons, grappling hooks, and machine guns, and it has fantastic futuristic looks. Of course, it's not a real vehicle, though. Pankaj Shah loved the Dark Knight movie where the Bat Pod made its first appearance, so he decided he wanted something like it for himself. The average custom chopper is hard to ride, expensive, cumbersome, and incredibly hard to navigate around corners. To be honest, I'd struggle to understand how you'd want something like that for yourself. But Pankaj was determined. He enlisted the help of Dave Welch from Chopper City, USA, and the Bat Pod replica was underway. It has 360 section tires on the front and rear and a hub center steered front wheel. Even the wheelbase is something special, as it looks like it should be for a pickup truck. But it definitely looks like the Bat Pod, and that was the ultimate goal. Number 7. X-Jet In Deadpool, the 2016 blockbuster film, the X-Jet was a highlight for many people. The original X-Jet was a modified Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird that Hank McCoy designed and built in the 60s. In X-Men First Class, the X-Men used it to travel to Cuba to foil the Hellfire Club's plans. It then featured in pretty much all X-Men movies. The features of the X-Jet varied throughout each movie, but some of the most standout ones were radar, bomb bay doors, stealth technology, high-speed engines, holographic projectors, cloaking technology, booster rockets, and folding wings. The X-Jet and SR-71 are similar in many ways, but we'd like to compare a few features. Firstly, the vertical takeoff and landing. In Deadpool, X-Men team members are able to take off vertically. The SR-71 can't do that, but the 5th generation F-35 Lightning II is actually pretty close. Then, the X-Men flew at supersonic speeds. That's actually not out of the question either. The aircraft was designed for cruising at three times the speed of sound. The Blackbird remains the highest flying and fastest crewed aircraft. It flew coast to coast in just 67 minutes. The real plane doesn't have alien cloaking technology, but it is still pretty stealthy. It can avoid reflecting radar signals. As futuristic as the X-Jet is, it's not too far off the mark. Number 6. The Aero Car Many superhero fans often dream about having a replica car from a film or comic book like the Arrow car, for example. This car was used by the DC Comics superhero Green Arrow and was a specially designed arrow-shaped car. It made its debut in number 73 of the More Fun Comics in 1941 and was the brainchild of Mord Weisinger and George Papp. This car is entirely fictional. Or is it? To be honest, what you're about to learn will make you think that you're probably just happy with a regular car. In Stockton, California, one vehicle owner got an aero car when she didn't ask for it. She was waiting at a stoplight on Highway 26 and Stokes Road in Stockton when she heard a thud. She didn't know what it was, but soon saw an arrow sticking into her vehicle. It pierced right through the hood. California Highway Patrol officers said this sort of situation highlights how unsafe it can be to discharge weapons into the air, even if they are arrows. Maybe Green Arrow and his sidekick Speedy had something to do with it. Number 5. Kit 
Okay, so it's not technically a superhero car, but Kit from Knight Rider is still worthy of mention. Kit was an artificially intelligent and self-aware Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. The car cost around $100,000 to build in the 80s, which would be about $266,000 today. Its interior, nose, and dash were all designed by Michael Sheff, a design consultant. Kit was no ordinary car. It was this highly futuristic vehicle that quickly earned a name for itself in the automotive world. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to own one just like it. So many people did. There have been pretty impressive replicas to hit the internet, including one built by superfan Chris Blasius. From Homestead Falls, Ohio, Chris went to extreme lengths to turn his 1982 Pontiac Trans Am into a picture-perfect replica. It even has an intelligent kit-talking computer. Chris spent $50,000, 2,000 man-hours, and two and a half years turning his dreams into reality. He even sourced parts from around the world. The car started with a hardtop, but he turned it into a T-top, which was listed in Kit's specs. Chris even reproduced freeze frames of the show in Photoshop to create a 3D model for the bodywork. The front bumper's never usually accurate on most replicas, but it's almost inch perfect on Chris's car. Number 4. Silver Surfer The Silver Surfer is an American Marvel Comics comic book character that's been around since his first appearance in the 1966 comic book Fantastic Four number 48. In recent years, he has also been in movies, video games, and TV shows. The Silver Surfer is a metallic-skinned humanoid alien who travels around space with his surfboard vehicle. He used to reside on the planet Zen La and was an astronomer named Norin Rath. After defeating the planet devourer Galactus, Norin ended up with some superpowers, which included a new body and a surfboard that could make him travel faster than light. This comic hero isn't one of the most well-known ones, but he certainly got a little bit more exposure during Halloween celebrations in 2016. Jesse Wellens from the Prank vs. Prank YouTube channel painted himself to look exactly like the Silver Surfer, silver skin and all. He then acquired an electric skateboard and put a silver surfboard on the top of it. With his Halloween costume complete, he zoomed around the streets of New York City, much to the delight of comic book fans. He may not have traveled faster than light, but he sure did zip around quite fast. Number 3. Transformer It seems like we've got such fantastic technology, but we're not doing enough with it. Like, we've got self-driving trucks, but we still haven't made Transformers commonplace. Come on, what's the holdup? Well, one company in Turkey said, enough is enough, and they decided to lead the way. Leadvision came up with a functioning BMW car that can become a humanoid at the touch of a button. It seems too good to be true, but we're not bluffing. Sure, it can't walk or shoot weapons, and it's a non-passenger vehicle operated with a remote control, but it really does transform. The sides extend out, then the base lifts up to put the car up to a giant transformer height. A head pops out of the top, and the doors become armed. It then makes awesome transformer noises, flashes its light, and... looks like it really should be in a movie. Then, with another touch of a button, it collapses back down again, folds itself up, and looks like your everyday BMW once more. Is it just me, or did you also imagine turning your car into a transformer to be able to walk it through traffic jams? Number 2. Batmobile Australian man Zach Mieljovic is a mega Batman fan. You wouldn't know that by looking at him, but you would by looking at his car. By hand, he built a street-legal version of the Batmobile from the 1989 film with Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton. And to compare the two vehicles side by side, there really isn't much difference. Zack's grandfather, retired engineer John Green, and his friend Scott Cox... <laughs> 
helped him build the car over two years. It took a lot of hard work and creative thinking, but they were even able to source parts from the vehicle used in the original film. It has a working afterburner and adjustable suspension, but unfortunately, no bombs flying out of the wheel, no grappling hooks, and no machine gun. There are a few other replica Batmobiles out there, but it's thought that Zax could be close to the only one that's actually street legal. He's been offered big bucks for it by businessmen around the world, and even a sheik in Dubai. He turned them all down. Instead, he teamed up with Make-A-Wish and dresses up as Batman with his car to do something special for sick kids. Number 1. Tron Light Cycle The light cycle was a form of high-speed personal transport in Tron Legacy. There have been a few generations of this pretty sweet ride, and they just keep getting better and better. They have identical front and rear wheels, light ribbons, and are powered by pure liquid energy. These light cycles are so cool that you probably wish you could own one for real. The guys at the Parker Brothers Choppers did their very best to make that a reality. They made an exact replica of the light cycle from Tron. It's an electric bike weighing 215 kilograms and measuring 8 feet long by 23 inches wide. It features a 96 volt electric engine with lithium ion batteries and takes just 35 minutes to charge. Once it hits the road, it can reach speeds of 100 60 kilometers per hour. It's not street legal yet, but the Parker Brothers were only in the testing phase and were carrying out modifications to make it as safe as possible. Seeing it in action is really like seeing it in Tron. It looks like it's almost floating on air as it makes its way down the road. It sounds zippy and has some pretty awesome lights as well. It took a lot of creativity just to come up with the concepts of these vehicles for superhero movies. So imagine how creative you'd have to be to actually bring them to life. I'd love to own one of these. What about you? If you could have any of them, which one would tickle your fancy the most? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!